Hello. Thank you for listening. This is the near-death experience of Anya. And this experience occurred in 1972 and was documented on September the 8th of 2017. Open quote. Until more recently, I was somewhat skeptical that I'd had an NDE from trying to commit suicide in 1972. The NDE didn't last very long at the time it happened, so I wasn't exactly sure it was an NDE. I've gotten much more confirmation recently that it was actually an NDE because more and more negative NDE stories have come out in recent years. Thus, I have finally acknowledged it was probably a real experience based on other negative NDEs that I've read and that had similarities to what I experienced. Thus, I no longer tell people about the typical explanations. One, that maybe my brain was misfiring while I was dying. Or two, I was having a hallucination due to the quaaludes. I had started using quaaludes in late 1972 and early in 1973 while I was trying to wean myself off opioids. I remember that this suicide attempt was after my life-saving surgery in 1970, I had an operation in an attempt to save what remained of my right and left kidneys. It was also after I had returned to college in the summer of 1971. I had gotten hooked on opioids from an attempt to salvage my bladder. My doctor put me on drugs to enable me to wake up every hour or every other hour during the night to urinate to exercise the involuntary muscles in my bladder. Without the opioids, I was unable to get enough sleep at night so that I would have enough energy to go to classes and to work the next day. Early in 1972, the doctor cut me off the drugs cold turkey. In the 1950s and 1970s, I don't think most doctors understood that it was so easy to become addicted to barbiturates and no one tapered off their patients in those days. While my doctor didn't mean to, he left me battling a severe opioid addiction at the age of 22. Later that year, I had become so depressed from difficult post-surgical recovery, an unhappy marriage, and etc., I didn't see any way to crawl back out of the pit to become normal again. I decided to leave this world from a drug overdose. My first sensation was that I began to feel very sleepy and my body was going slowly numb. Next, I felt as if I was in a dark, black void of nothingness, seeing and hearing nothing, feeling nothing, and sensing nothing. It occurred to me that I must be dead. As a child, I had asked my father what I should expect when I die. Since my dad leaned towards atheism, he would always say, Nothing just blackness. You won't feel anything. I immediately acknowledged to myself that this is what I was expecting to get upon death. It was a black nothingness and I didn't feel a thing. So it seemed as if my dad was right about that. Yet if that was so, why was I able to acknowledge or perceive the nothingness if I truly was truly dead? At this stage, I could not tell if I was up or down. I was just nothing inside a void of nothingness. As soon as I realized that perhaps I was experiencing events suggested by my dad when I was a youngster, I began hearing voices that got louder and louder and louder. Eventually, it was a loud ruckus all around me, but coming from below where I had been lying on a bed. I was still inside of a pitch black void, but now I began to feel my limbs. I was being grabbed by my legs, calves, and ankles as beings were trying to pull me downwards. Although I had been lying down on a bed before, it now felt as if I were upright and floating in space. I was not standing on anything. It seemed to me that the beings below me were just trying to pull me downwards to where they were because they were angry and tortured souls who wanted me to feel just as badly as they did. I remember feeling terrified. It was so dark and I could not see anything below me, so it was hard to figure out what was going on. As they pulled me downwards towards them, I began to feel progressively colder. As the beings pulled me into their midst, I 
it seemed squishy and wet, as well as dark and cold. Meanwhile, the beings all around me were ripping and tearing at me. I was thinking that I didn't like this at all and wanted to go back. Just as I was beginning to sense the hopelessness and helplessness that the beings felt in this horrible place, I was all of a sudden getting shaken and woken up. All sensations of darkness, cold, and squishiness left. All feelings of being ravaged by angry, agonized, and tortured souls started to immediately fade away from my immediate experience. I was married to my first husband in 1972. I think I was passed out before 2.30 to 3 p.m. My plan was to be dead before my ex-husband arrived home before 5.30. For some reason, he came home really early that day and found me passed out in our king-size bed. He told me he had to shake me really hard for a long time to get me to wake up. He was really scared that I was dead. I admitted to him that I had taken all the pills. At the time, it seemed like such a brief experience that initially I discounted it that it had really happened. I do remember thanking my ex-husband for waking me up and getting me out of that terrible place. End quote. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't a good one at all. Hmm. Let's see what some of these questions say. Uh, comparing your level of consciousness answer, I really cannot say that my level of consciousness shifted that much during this short experience. I do not think I had crossed over to the other side for very long, but I am unsure how long it was. I had no sense of time, but I do know that I passed out after 2.15 or so and that I was revived before 2.45-ish. Question rating your highest level of consciousness. When was that? Answer, when the agonized and tortured beings were grabbing at me and ripping me apart, and when I felt the cold, squishy blackness all around me, I have never forgotten that feeling of being tortured and ripped apart by beings. I could feel and hear, but not see. I still somehow knew they were angry and tortured souls, though. To this day, I can still feel the pain and terror they were trying to inflict upon me when I want to conjure it up and think about it, which is not often. Question, did time seem to speed up or slow down? Answer, the void seemed to last a long, long time. But once I was pulled down into the underworld or wherever I ended up, everything seemed to be happening all at once. Also, I had no sense of time and time seemed to have no meaning. Right before I left that place, I had the realization that it could be forever hell-like existence. That realization has scared me to this day. Question comparing your vision answer. There were no vision elements to my negative NDE experience. I never saw anything during the experience. Comparing your hearing answer. I would say that the level of noisiness and the emotional noisiness of the experience was much greater than the intensity of noises that I normally experience on earth. Question. Did you seem to enter some other unearthly world answer? Due to the circumstances I ended up in, it was definitely a hell-like experience, although there was no fire and brimstone, and I did not proceed to a more hell-like visionary experience after the initial pull-down into the underworld area. Question, what emotions did you feel during the experience? Answer, fear terror, agonized, tormented feelings, disgust at the creatures and their behavior, but also concern for the being's welfare. I was confused because I could not figure out the source sources of their torments and initially why they seemed to want to torment me. Question, what importance did you place in your religious slash spiritual life prior to your experience? Answer, slightly important to me. Question, what was your religion prior to your experience? Answer, unaffiliated agnostic. I grew up and was married in 1969 in a Methodist church, but had fallen away from following my Christian roots by the time I got kidney disease, uh, 1969 to 70, and almost died from that. I was recovering from two surgeries and battling an opioid addiction caused by my kidney doctor when I attempted suicide in 1972. Question, have your religious practices changed in your experience? Answer, yes. See prior explanation as to when I first 
read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. I have tried reading more of the Bible since then, but without much success. I keep trying, but not getting much further past those sections of the New Testament. Question, what importance do you place on your religious slash spiritual life after your experience? Answer, moderately important to me. Question, what is your religion now? Answer, Christian Protestant. I have always felt closer to God in nature and have never really liked attending organized churches. After the NDE, I have learned leaned more in that direction. I am currently seeking a more inclusive faith to be involved with in contrast to the Methodist Church here that I occasionally attend. Question, did your experience include features consistent with your earthly beliefs? Answer, both consistent and inconsistent. It was consistent with the Methodist teachings about hell versus heaven. Until that time, I was inclined to believe there was a heaven but no hell. It was also consistent with my dad's atheistic belief that I would feel nothing after death. It was inconsistent in that those two belief systems gave me contradictory explanations, and yet I experienced aspects from both belief systems. Question, did you have a change in your values and beliefs because of your experience? Answer, yes. By the end of 1973, I had read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament at the suggestion of my first boss. Although I had grown up hearing about Jesus Christ in Sunday school and at church, his teachings really didn't sink in to me until 1973-74 to when I first read parts of the New Testament as an adult. I was more intensely aware than ever of the hypocrisy of many Christians I saw all around me, both inside and outside of church settings. Instead of that understanding causing me to turn away from Christianity as I had done in my teen years, especially after I had been sexually abused at age 10 to 11 by one of my father's employees, I realized for the first time that just because so many Christians and religious leaders are child molesters or hypocrites who do not truly believe in God and Jesus, that does not mean that I should throw out the baby with the bathwater and expel Jesus from my life. Within one to two semesters of reading the New Testament, I decided I had to change my current career path to do something to help the planet and future generations of humans on earth. I changed my college major from accounting and business to social psychology and biology. Next, I prepared myself to attend graduate school to pr- pursue a career in wildlife conservation. By the early 1980s, I had become known as one of the first conservation biologists in the USA while I was working on my doctorate in biology at the University of Texas. If not for the negative NDE, which eventually led to my reading of the New Testament, I would not have had the will and strength to go out on my own and leave my multimillionaire ex-husband in 1974 in order to pursue a career in science, something most women did not do in Texas in 1974, and live in a state of extreme poverty from 1973 to 1989. I had to have something to inspire me during all those tough years of struggle and poverty. Question, did you seem to encounter a mystical being or presence or hear an unidentifiable voice? Answer, I heard a voice I could not identify. I knew I could not discern a voice of anyone I knew or any one of the beings per se. Question, what life changes occurred in your life after the experience? Answer, large changes before the suicide attempt and negative NDE. My doctors told me I was one of the few patients He was glad he had saved. My response was that I didn't know if I was worth saving. He said he thought I would do important things. That made me start wondering if I was saved for a reason, and if so, what was the reason? The negative NDE made me think about it even more. Why did I have that transcendental experience, and what did it mean? Had I actually died and experienced a death experience? If I did, what did that mean? Question. Have your relationship changed specifically because of your experience? Answer, yes, absolutely. I began to question how solid my relationship with my husband was, especially after my surgery, because I found out that he was more concerned if we had to maintain a normal sex life if I ended up with a urine bag on the outside of my body. 
he was concerned about the possibility that I might lose my bladder and end up living an impaired life for the remainder of my existence. My suicide attempt was partially in response to these discussions I had with my husband both prior to and after my surgeries in 1970-1971. After the negative NDE, I decided to stop being the doormat in our relationship and to strike out to find my own career path, not one dictated by my husband, mother-in-law, or my parents. Unfortunately, the new career path, i.e. new life path, eventually led to an extramarital affair. But that relationship made me realize many things, including what it was like to be loved unconditionally. After that, I knew I had to end my loveless marriage and move on with my life, which I did right after I moved away to attend my first graduate school in 1974. Hmm. Question. How accurately do you remember the experience in comparison to other life experiences that happened about the same time? Answer, I think I remember it more accurately than real life events at the time, but I'm being honest to say that I'm unsure. That's partly because I tried to actively, actively suppress this experience and eliminate it from my life's experience for about 30 years. That was partly because of how people whom I told about it between 1974 and 1985 reacted so strangely about it and partly because I didn't want to remember most of the experience. Despite that, this experience has continued to influence my career path and my life path ever since it happened in 1972. Question, do you have any psychic, non-ordinary, or other special gifts after your experience that you did not have before the experience? Answer, uncertain. I think that both my mother and I have slash had some psychic abilities. Mostly, we both had dreams that we have told each other about, and afterwards, the dreams usually, not always, came true. So over time, we both came to understand and appreciate that we each had this dream forecasting capability. After my negative NDE, I do not feel that I got any better or worse at this. For the past 15 to 20 years, I have had a severe sleep disorder to where I do not drop into REM sleep anymore. I've had sleep issues my entire life, but I no longer experience REM dreams anymore, so I do not have those dream forecasts anymore. Question, are there one or several parts of your experience that are especially meaningful or significant to you? Answer, my mother was one of the only people whom I told about my negative NDE, especially the part where I was dragged downward and tortured in the mushy, squishy, dark, cold underworld. I wanted to know if she thought I was going to hell because I had tried to kill myself. She answered that she didn't know. But it made sense because she believed God and Jesus don't want us to kill ourselves. It was that discussion with me in 1982 that led my mother to confide in me that she had experienced a positive NDE a few hours before she passed away around 2 a.m. on 10 Both she and her cardiologist in the hospital where the ambulance had taken her confirmed to me via phone from New York to Texas that my mom had been found flatlined on the floor of her Houston home late on that afternoon of September 2nd, 1998, when they finally got inside front door and resuscitated her. She told me for the first time in her life she was no longer afraid of dying, and she had communicated with Jesus and knew she would see him again when she finally passed on, only a few hours later. I remember asking her if Jesus or anyone else told her she had to go back, and she said no. From my studies of NDEs, this worried me, since most people are informed they are coming back to this plane of existence before they leave the afterlife. I immediately called my youngest brother after I hung up the phone from talking with my mother about this and told him I was pretty sure that mom was going to die later that night. She died about four hours later. Mm. Question. Have you ever shared this experience with others? Answer, yes. I tried to share it with my ex-husband right after he shook me and woke me up out of the NDE. However, I was mumbling a lot and sort of out of it, so I'm sure he just blew me off because I had overdosed. 
I didn't try to talk to him about it again because he was so unreceptive. I believe my mother in 1982 was the first person I really spoke to about it in any detail. Much later, I began meeting other people who had NDEs and eventually spoke to some of them about the negative NDE. Question, what, do you, what did you believe about the reality of your experience shortly after it happened? Answer, I always believed the experience was definitely or probably real. However, I tried like hell to convince myself it was not real. I did not want it to have been a real experience and the usual response one would get by admitting to others that I had felt I went to hell or a hell-like environment was never that accepting. I tried to, de to deny that it had happened for about 30 years, despite telling my ex-husband and mother that it had happened to me. When I told them, I always couched it in terms of, this may have been a hallucination or my imagination, not necessarily real. <laughs> Question, what do you believe about the reality of your experience now? Answer, experience was probably real. Internally, inside my gut, I have always felt the experience was real. I just didn't know what to make of it. I still don't know what to make of it. Question, is there anything else you would like to add about your experience? Answer, initially, I looked up the negative NDE as a totally negative experience. I didn't initially see it as being related to the major life change that took place much, pretty much immediately after I had the negative NDE. It probably wasn't until after 10 to 15 years or more before I began to relate the experience to my having the strength and will to change my career path and to realize that I probably would have stayed married to a multimillionaire who did not really love me. End quote. End questions. Anya, thank you. Amazing. Congratulations. And what an experience you had. Appreciate you sharing that. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you have a nice day.